I have a new giveaway going on right now. I am giving away three copies of Metroid Dread uh, for the month of October. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed to the channel. That's it. We will draw the winners at the end of the month. Uh, so I wish all you guys luck on that. Uh, beyond that giveaway, uh, I also have to shout out Mr. Mason Conrad. He is a professional thumbnail artist and does a few other things as well. He helped create our E3 backdrops and he also um, <laughs> is actually editing this video. 144 gigabyte? Are you serious? If you guys ever need some thumbnail action or anything else, be sure to check out Mason Conrad. There will be proper links to all of his uh, socials and everything down in the description uh, if you would like to reach out to him for pricing details and all of that jazz. If you enjoy the thumbnail in this video or the editing in this video, that is where you can get all of your greatness from. Hey everyone, this is a special video because there's something in the studio that as of a few days ago, I didn't know what was gonna happen. We got this, this, this box here. That's actually this Nintendo Switch right here. No big deal. Uh, we also actually have a Switch Lite, but no one cares about that because we also have this. That's right, folks. This is the Nintendo Switch OLED system. And I think first let's just start off by saying that this is going to be an ultimate comparison. We will be doing everything we can to test this system and compare it to this system as well as the Switch Lite. Let's start by just kind of showing off the difference in the unboxing experiences between the version 2 Switch and the Switch OLEDs. And let's focus on these bad boys. So, this is the base Nintendo Switch box. Uh, so we open this up with this tab right here and then it conveniently opens up like that and bam. So this is where you would have your switch unit and the two joy con You'd have the dock over here, um, some other stuff over here. We'd have controllers and all sorts of jazz. You guys all know that. This is nothing new. This is the same unboxing experience as existed in 2017. So here is the Nintendo Switch OLED. And again, it has a tab. Well, first let's just take a look at the box. You guys can kind of see all of that stuff on the box. This box is pretty beat up, but you know, what matters is, is the internals of what we want it to be. So let's open up the box. You pull this tab out, put it down, open it up, and there is the Switch OLED. So first, we have our white Joy-Cons. Now, full disclaimer, this is not my first time unboxing this system. Um, so yeah, you're gonna see games and stuff installed on it or attempting to install, because uh, we have some comparisons in tow here. Uh, but let me pull out the actual Switch OLED. And as you see there, this is indeed a Switch OLED. You should be able to already tell that it has a bigger screen. You can see on the back, the logo is further down. We have a different kickstand, all that jazz. Uh, so let's just slide on these Joy-Cons and actually set this aside like this. Underneath, we have things I haven't unboxed yet. We have the new dock. This is obviously the big ticket item on the bottom. Uh, this dock is white and features a LAN port. It also can be updated via firmware, so we will take a look at that. Pop off this back quick. There'll be some other shots as well later that will show off the dock in more detail. But yeah, that is the dock. All right, and we have HDMI cable, which we will use this one. Power brick, which looks to be the exact same power brick, which I'm not, I'm not surprised. Nintendo branded power brick for Switch. Uh, we have a grip, which is going to be the exact same grip as the original Switch. So we're just going to kind of keep that in here because I don't need a second grip right now. And that's it. Uh, I think there are Joy-Con straps somewhere. Oh, here we go. Is that what these things are called? And these are just slightly different in that they have um, some different sort of um, texture on the actual string. Uh, as it's kind of like a braided style. But overall, it's pretty much the exact same. Uh, so... This stuff isn't really what's so different other than they've kind of compacted how they could put Switch in a box. This box is smaller than the original box. So uh, obviously they fit the same amount of stuff, slightly bigger platform in a smaller box. So that's always good. It's better on the environment, all that jazz. Let's set this box aside. All right, so first thing we're going to do is compare all of these switches next to each other while turned on. So let's put the Switch light above. And then we have the switch OLED in the middle. And let's just turn these all on. So here's the normal switch. All right, here is the switch OLED. And then here is the switch light. 
So you can kind of get a good comparison here of the screen size. So one thing you should immediately notice is this screen is more of a true white, uh, whereas these look more washed out. This one actually looks almost cyan in comparison to the light. And then we obviously have the original um, Switch OLED right here in the middle. Uh, but yeah, one thing we can look at quick is the difference in the sizes. So when we stack up the switches like this, you will notice ever so slightly that this one appears longer, um, longer width wise. So yes, this is definitely a slightly bigger. It is supposed to be 9.5 inches wide versus 9.4 inches wide. The original Switch, I don't know the dimensions of the Switch Lite, but obviously the Switch Lite is not intended to be uh, bigger. Anyways, this is just a look at this. Um, let's get into some of the comparisons you guys might actually care about the most. Let's play some damn games, shall we? All right, so now we're going to take some things apart. So this is first off the new dock. Um, so you guys can get a good look at that. Um, it is glossy on the inside. Now someone wondered uh, if it is less scratch resistant. And while I'm not going to intentionally scratch my switch, I'm going to say it's probably not less scratch resistant just because it's shiny in there. It's still a hard plastic. So I would say scratching problems are just as prevalent as they were on the original switch dock. It's just there was a matte finish inside. See, it's a matte finish versus the gloss. Otherwise, the insides look rather identical, which um, there is one difference, of course. Uh, I don't know if you guys can tell, uh, but when we take it apart, you'll, you'll see uh, they moved where the air vents are. So we know on the back of the normal dock, um, you know, you just have your, your HDMI and all that jazz. Uh, and then this one doesn't have a hinge. It, it, it just pops off. So people kept telling me it has a hinge. Um, I have the thing in front of me. There's no hinge. And we see we have our ethernet jack in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these docks apart uh, and compare them. So let's get the uh, original dock apart first uh, and then go from there. All right, so already noticing uh, some differences here. So on the back of the board, they did move the ribbon cable that connects the charging port on the inside uh, over to the right a bit more, to the left. And then there's more chiplets back here. So we had one, two, three chiplets right here, but we also have one, two, three, four. And then there's a little tiny one right there. This is an ARM microprocessor. Uh, this has the ability to manage the whole chip um, and everything happened on it, including the ethernet. Uh, and it also has memory in it that can be updated. This is where you get your firmware updates in comparison to the original. Uh, so this is new. This is new. Um, technically this particular model number is capable of upscaling. I can't say it's going to upscale or handle upscaling, but it is capable. Um, on this side, obviously we see our standard ethernet port, which does have a separate controller for that ethernet port. So this should be full one gig speeds, but we'll see on the internet speed test if that holds true. You can see on this side, it's a much more simpler board on the original. Um, and I'll take some close up shots of these as well, some images here to show you guys. But yeah, this looks uh, this looks good. This looks really good. I'm the, There is a controller in there that can do upscaling. So uh, at least based on what I was able to look up that is fascinating. All right, so now we're gonna be taking uh, these all apart. Now, technically, I already have, I don't have to take apart this switch because I already have a switch here that is a part. And um, we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, the switch light, by the way, I already took all the screws out and I've already taken it apart once. Uh, I didn't put the screws back in. Uh, so we're just going to get this thing apart. One thing I know what one people, some people wanted to know quick, and I didn't address this yet, uh, is if you wanna know if this game card flap is any better, than the original game card flap. Now they are slightly different designs, as you can see. Um, this one obviously being uh, more shiny because the whole Switch OLED's a matte finish. 
Uh, if you guys look at that, it's a matte finish compared to glossy uh, or glossier. Um, so if you want to know if this is any better, so this is like a, a rounded, obviously it's got the little rubber there. Uh, I wouldn't say that this is necessarily any better. Um, you can see it's basically using the exact same um, hinge system there. Uh, they're just slightly different shaped at the top to match the body designs. But um, yeah, um, you can see a look at the top and see the extra uh, functionality here. I guess we'll see what that is when we take it apart. Obviously the difference in the power buttons here. Um, everything else is the same. I did take apart the Joy-Con already. I will note uh, that we're not going to be showing that on video because it turns out that the Joy-Con are exactly the same. They're, they did just put a white shell on it. There's no updates to the Joy-Con. Sorry to say, these are not, um, yeah, these, these are the same sticks. I'm sorry. I was hoping they'd be new, but they're not. Anyways, let's uh, take the OLED apart. This is my first time. Um, and let me get the switch light apart here. Um, because of course I already squeezed this thing back together. Switch light's a, a bit of a pain to take apart. All right. As I said, just kind of flies off like that. Um, so that's just a backplate of switch light. And then there's this. This is the power and volume stuff right here. This is the original switch, which you guys know, you know, there's the backplate for the original switch. Um, it's got totally dried out thermal base, but whatever. Uh, it's kind of disassembled at this point. Um, so this would normally be, uh, let me get this in frame here. So this would normally be uh, covering up this, and then this would go uh, like like this. This would this would go like that. Uh, this is the SD card reader that would be right uh, here, and then it's missing the game card slot. This is actually an extra switch I use for parts. Um, the battery's still good in it, so that's as an example. If I ever need to switch battery, I can get it right out of here. Uh, these do use two different batteries, the light and the normal switch. We'll see what battery this one uses. Uh, but yeah, you can see, obviously, uh, the fin stack here. Um, and I, I want to get again, a close-up. This is the original blades, uh, but we'll compare that. Um, and this is the same chip. So I don't know if I'm going to go down to the chip level here. Uh, this is the memory module, the 32 gigs. Uh, again, so I don't know if we're going to rip up the plate that's going to be on the other one, uh, because literally the chip's going to be the same inside. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so yeah. That is that. Let's get taking apart the OLED. So Nintendo, like a lot of companies, likes using TriWin. I have yet to have to change my uh, my screwdriver here. TriWin has been plenty. And I am using an iFixit kit. I'll put a link to this iFixit kit, this exact one, uh, down in the description. It is something that I find to be extremely useful. Um, and it comes with the cover here that you can kind of organize your screws on. Uh, it's not magnetic, but there are ridges and stuff. So I find it to be uh, quite useful. Um, I'm someone that takes apart electronics quite frequently. I wouldn't suggest this is something you do to your switch. Uh, notably, it could void your warranty. Technically, opening any electronic is not um, legally a way to void warranty. However, there's legal. And then there's obviously um, when you start messing with the chip. Okay, those are actually, those are Phillips head. They are so strange in how they switch between Phillips head and uh, Tri-Wing, but this is just, this is just what Nintendo does. <laughs> they want to confuse you. They want you to strip all your screws. So that was the wrong one for this one. This is the one we need. See how much easier that came out. All right, let's we'll separate that because that is a different type of screw. It's a really tiny one. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to have to remove the kickstand. I know uh, when I watched Austin Evans' video, because he was the first person to take apart a Switch OLED, sort of, he sort of took it apart. He took the backplate off. Um, that he didn't, uh, he did remove um, this, but I'm not so sure that we actually need to remove that. Uh, now, I am going to disconnect uh, the rails here. I'm not sure if I need to disconnect the rails, but we're going to do it anyways. And good, it all uses the same screw size, so that's nice. So we're going to unscrew the rails anyways. Um, I can't remember from the original switch if I had to unscrew the rails or not, uh, but it's not that hard to just screw them back in. Um, I'm not, just like with the dock, I'm not going to show the process of putting it back together. Uh, what was fun about taking part of the dock is I thought I, I, I snapped one of the little screws because there's a hidden tiny screw in there, um, but uh, I didn't. So everything's all good. So the rail should just kind of sit there. Um, so you can kind of see um, all of that. And you can see where the rail's connected uh, at the bottom here. 
Because taking apart the hinge is going to be a pain in the butt. But you know what? We're going to take apart the hinge anyways. Right? This is a disassembly. So why not just take it all the way apart? I will attempt to obviously reassemble the hinge. And kind of see how it kind of rolls down. Let's see how well you see that. See how it kind of rolls in. Rolls out. So that's how the hinge mechanism works. So um, we got the back plate off. Uh, but one of the rails broke while I was taking it apart. It, the ribbon actually snapped off. This is a good time to see. This is the original switch, and this is the switch rail I broke. Let's see if they're the same design. So it looks like they are identical. So I sh well, actually, there's a little bit of difference in this top part here. It's rounded up more, but I think I should be able to still use this rail on here. So we're going to get this rail uh, taken out, maybe. Maybe I could just reuse the cable. It's possible because they have a ribbon cable running right here. I might be able to just reuse the cable. So this one only uses three screws. This one uses more than three, but anyways. Uh, we're going to transfer the rail off of this one. So this is why having a switch with extra parts. As I said, taking apart your switch OLED is not something I suggest people do at home. Um, so I'm just going to get this rail removed with that cable and see if I can. So since I broke that other rail, we're going to re-screw this rail down in the bottom. It looks like uh, when you take this apart, you don't undo the bottom screw. The bottom screw on the rail is not needed to be undone. Oops, is not needed to be undone um, to take it apart. So the key thing is leave the bottom screw in so you don't rip your ribbon cable like I did. That's just a theory, a game theory. All right, so now we won't rip that one. Um, ah, dang it. All right, so I got this um, removed from the uh, original switch. Uh, and where is, so this is the rail for the new switch OLED. And this is the old rail, as you see, the difference, I had to drill out a screw that that, uh, that worked. But you see that the holes are a little bit different and the top's a little bit different. Uh, but it looks like the underneath is the same. So I'm going to take this board off, put it on here, uh, and then uh, we'll keep dissecting the switch OLED after I do that, just to make sure I have everything in working order. All right, we're going to give up on trying to fix that rail for now. <laughs> it is what it is. My left Joy-Con, my left Joy-Con might not charge correctly, or it won't charge at all, to be honest. Um, We'll definitely disconnect that ribbon cable, though. I want to get this thing apart. So inside, we still have more Phillips head screwdriver or Phillips head screws. So I definitely did not need to take apart this hinge. So I'm going to first I'll reattach the things I did not need to take apart on this hinge. All right, let's get the rest of the switch taken apart. I've already gotten this far. So, you know, I broke a rail. It is what it is. What's the worst I could do now? <laughs> <laughs> I say that now. Let's get all these screws removed. So with the ground wire set aside, we now have it open. And we can now take a look at it compared to the original. Now again, I'm not going to take this off right here. Uh, it's just the same chip. It's just the same Tegra X1 chip um, underneath this heatsink here. Uh, what is noticeable, though, is where, where, where did I put that old heatsink? There it is. Um, <clears throat> is uh this is the original nintendo switch heat pipe and this is the uh new one um for the oled and it's much thinner it doesn't necessarily mean that it's worse um but uh yeah that is interesting and um the fan looks like it's slightly different let me lift this up here i don't want to break anything else more than i already did uh but you can see the fans the fan fins look a little bit different um, the fan itself looks like it might be a little bit smaller. Um, so that's something to consider. Now, how much further can we take this thing apart? How hard is it to get the board out? Good question. Good question. What more do we have to take apart here? Um, looks like we have a few board screws uh, right on here. So we'll, we'll, we'll attempt to take the board out and get down to the screen. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, one thing I should be doing right now quick is disconnecting that battery. Uh, so let's disconnect all the all the connectors here. We have uh, the battery connector here. All right, so here we have 
um, the ribbon cable running like this uh, for the right, the left rail. And it kind of curls under and comes up and connects right there. I uh, disconnected the power. I can't get this thing undone right now without some tweezers. Um, let's see. Um, what else could we worry about here? So this is um, interesting. If this is the rail, I'm curious. Like, is this the, why is the left rail all the way over here? Also, this PCB is really different. Um, I know like Austin Evans said this looks the same, but look at this. Okay, so yeah, this is the uh, micro SD card reader, which is a separate reader. This is the micro SD card reader on the old Switch. Uh, it's here and it's kind of this giant PCB. Over here we have the 32 gig memory module. I think this is the 64 gig memory module. It's still a separate board, but now it's connected with the SD card reader. Interesting, I wonder if that gives us faster speeds on the SD card. That's very, very interesting. And this, the more I look at it, the more this, yeah, this is definitely a, uh, um, the thing over here. So, um, even, the, even though I did get this one off, um, it would not have been even close. It would not have been even close to long enough to make that run. So I think I'm just screwed with this, uh, this right Joy-Con rail for, for now. Um, it just is what it is. Um, I'm just not gonna be able to do anything about that that Joy-Con rail. Um, it's just not gonna charge for now. Not the end of the world, of course. Uh, this is the hazards of doing stuff like this. Um, let's see if I can see anything else to take off. Any other screws? See, I think that's just holding it down to the board. I don't think that's. Oh, am I gonna have to? Yeah. Ooh, those are not meant to be taken out. Those are punched in. I'm not so sure I can. So I'm not so sure I can go much lower uh, into the switch than I am right now. I wanted to get to the panel. Uh, one thing we should do is look at the batteries quick while we're in here. I can't get down to the panel level because it looks like they they made this thing. They do not want people taking this thing apart. I cannot get past um, this part here because these are punched in. See, on the old switch, you can unscrew these. You can't do that on this one. So. Um, that is unfortunate. Those are like riveted in, uh, and I don't have the tools here to take care of that. So instead of breaking things, take a look at these batteries here. We have, um, a rechargeable Elyon battery. This is the HAC003. This is also an HAC003. This is a newer version of it. We, uh, use ADR622233, ADL808201, um, uh, rechargeable. Doesn't really seem to be any capacity differences. This is uh, 4,310 milliamp hours, and this one is 4,310 milliamp hours. Uh, 16 watt hour battery, 16 watt hour battery. So, um, that is the breakdown of the internals of the Switch OLED. Well, um, as you can see, I got quite the mess in front of me. Uh, multiple switches torn apart. The Switch OLED is back together. Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I did break the right rail. Um, I can still connect the Joy-Con and it still will work uh, with the Switch. Um, I didn't get everything compared today that I wanted to, although right now the right Joy-Con isn't working. The home button's not working. That's a pain in the butt. Did I really break it, break it? Oh boy. Nope, there it goes, it, it connected. I just can't do it while it's connected to the rail. That's interesting. Um, anyways, uh, that's my problem. Um, yeah, I, I, I broke my Switch OLED. It is what it is, uh, but it still works. We'll still be able to do some videos. Um, my general thoughts on this are as follows. Um, this is definitely the what the Switch probably should have been back in 2017. Um, this screen size is just beautiful. The, the biggest upgrade, obviously, is the screen. And this screen is, in, in one word, stunning. Um, I know it's just OLED, and I know OLED's not a new technology. Uh, but seriously, this kickstand, this is what the kickstand should have been. The whole time this kickstand is amazing um you know especially compared to the original it it, it it's quite uh, a feat um I, I just like the overall feel the matte finish i it just feels more premium um it feels all metal uh one thing i, I didn't answer earlier if you want to know the screen is it glass is it plastic this is a glass front screen it is not a plastic front there is a thin film on it that's related to the oled but the screen itself it uses a glass front, not a um, not a, a plastic one. That doesn't mean you shouldn't use a screen protector. 
Um, the dock will scratch your switch potentially. Um, they didn't really do anything to improve it. They just made it shiny on the inside. Um, but as far as I can tell, all the edges are still the same. It's still pretty rough. Um, they didn't really do anything that's going to make that experience better. Um, so in the grand scheme, uh, do I think the Switch OLED is worth it? I don't know. I can't really review it right now. I haven't had enough time with it. Uh, today was mostly all about comparing, uh, doing the best comparisons that I can possibly do at the moment with this. I have some other tools coming in to do some stuff later. Uh, but really, I want to spend, you know, a bit more time with this thing and uh, get back to you guys. If you guys have any questions or thoughts about the Switch OLED, go ahead and leave them down in the description. I will do a follow-up video answering as many questions as I can after spending some time, uh, some more time with it. Because today was so focused on comparisons. Now I just want to take this thing for a general spin, not worry about cross comparing to the, the original Switch or the Switch Lite. Not worry about any of that. Just actually just play this thing like I would play my other Switch and just see if I even notice that it's a bigger screen. If I even care about the OLED experience, if I care about anything about this, um, that is something that we'll have to bring to you in a future video because again, maybe at, even though all the comparisons and everything might make this look like it's a worthwhile investment, maybe it's not after I've played it for a while and I go, you know what? It just feels like a normal switch. And if it feels like a normal switch, do you really need to upgrade? Probably not. So we'll have to wait and see, but for right now, hey, the thing works. Um, it's beautiful. And it's definitely the best looking switch in my opinion. I used to think the Animal Crossing one was, but this, I mean, this dock, I don't know. Something about it is just really, really neat. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, this is, I guess, the ultimate Nintendo Switch OLED comparison video. Yet there's more comparisons to come, more impressions to come, and more content to come based around this platform. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to check out Mason Conrad for all of your thumbnail needs. Um, be sure to subscribe to enter our giveaway. And I will catch you guys in the next video.